right, so what is one book all entrepreneurs must read hands down? What's going on everybody? Your boy Juan Valdez coming at you guys with another video and today we're going to be changing things up a little bit, right? So I'm going to be sharing with you guys some key takeaways that I got from one of my favorite persuasion books and of course persuasion, I know a lot of you guys watching, you're, you know, you're in business, you're either doing sales, you're either doing e-commerce, social media marketing, affiliate marketing, Amazon, whatever you guys are doing, you guys can apply these same tactics that I personally learned from this book into any of those that you're doing. So I'm confident that you guys will get value from this. For those of you guys that are brand new to my channel, welcome on over. This is the VFAM. The VFAM is a community and a movement of individuals that are striving to do a lot more than what society has offered us to do. Before I, we actually get started, I wanted to get some feedback from you guys, right? I wanted to know, you know, what kind of videos you guys would want to see that are book related. So if you guys want to see you know a lot more book related videos drop a like on this video let me know also in the comments below would you guys want to see specifically book recommendations would you want to see book reviews or maybe specifically just key takeaways of the book just like i'm kind of doing now where i'm just cutting to the chase and kind of sharing with you guys those specific nuggets that i personally picked up from the books in this book right here one of my favorite psychology books is called influence it's by robert Ch cialdini it's a very known book of course, it's a number one, it's a national bestseller right there. You guys can see that. And there's a reason as to why it's a very known book, right? It's super powerful. And it pretty much breaks down the psychological biases that come into play whenever you're trying to make anyone make any kind of decision, right? Whether you're trying to sell them something, whether you're trying to convince them to take your point of view, whatever the case may be, when it comes down to persuasion, there's some key things you must do in order to really get someone over the edge, whether it be, you know, if you want to really make that sale, if you want to close that contract that you have, if you want to make get someone to make that purchase on your website, whatever the case may be, there's some key things you always want to cover and do to make sure that, that actually happens. So I kind of want to go through a few of the examples that they go over and kind of share that with you guys and kind of just also go over how I used to use these same tactics because I use a lot of these same skill sets in my door-to-door -door sales career to make six figures and I also use the same tactics you know within e-commerce to also make six figures so obviously there's a correlation there's a reason why uh, you know these same skill sets allow you to make more money and it's because again they're super powerful so to kind of just jump right into it basically there's these weapons they call them weapons of influence right and there's specifically six of them that are super powerful and I'm actually going to be covering each one uh, somewhat in order I may skip uh, within each one of them, but we'll kind of go into it. So one of the first things is, one of the first weapons of influence, as they call it in this book, is reciprocity, right? You know, when you do something for someone, they automatically feel like they're entitled to do something for you. That's just naturally how humans are. Don't ask me why, but if you ever thought about, you know, a time when someone did you a favor, if you think about it, usually you felt required to them to then do them a favor. So that's just naturally you know, the reciprocity taking place, right? And that happens subconsciously. Like we don't even purposely try to do this. It's just something that happens. You know, when I was doing door-to-door -door sales, how I use reciprocity is when I was talking to the homeowner that I was knocking, when I was going door-to-door, -door, I would I was providing them with value, right? What I was do is I was explaining to them how right now, you know, how they're getting all their electricity and how it all works compared to if they had solar and how much they could save. So right now I'm doing them a favor, right? I'm giving them all this free information, showing them value before even asking them for anything because first thing off the jump when I was pitching these people, what I would do is literally give them all value up front and then after I give them all the value and I start to explain you know, how it all works and they ask questions, later on that I would transition into ask for the close. So that's one of the first things that they go over is like, reciprocity is just huge, right? We're all naturally inclined to, you know, as soon as someone does something for us, we automatically feel like we have to do something for them and that's automatically, right? Now in e-commerce, you know, the same principle applies the exact same way. When somebody comes to our website and you know we, we, we do this, this kind of giveaway where somebody can participate in this game to win a discount from our you know from our store to buy anything they want now they're getting something as soon as they come on our website and then of course what do they feel like they have to do they feel like now that they have something they obviously have to give something back so it's not like a hundred percent of the time like you just give something and a hundred percent of the time you're gonna get something back 
but you have a much higher chance of getting someone to, you know, reciprocate and, you know, give you something back if you give them first, right? So that's something that's like huge reciprocity. And you can use that in almost any single business, right? When I was, again, in sales and e-commerce, those are just two examples. But I guarantee you guys, in anything that you're doing that's business related, you guys can also use reciprocity. That's just how it works. That's one of the first ones. The next one's going to be scarcity, right? A lot of you guys may have already heard about scarcity. Uh, and scarcity, the way that it works is super simple, right? When I was going door to door, I would go around, when I first didn't know about scarcity, I would go around saying that pretty much anybody that wants to do solar, they can do it. After I learned about scarcity, I was letting, I was taught, telling, letting the customers know that we only have three availabilities on the street that we could actually do uh, for solar, right? So we can only do three more homes. Literally, my pitch was, hey, we can only do three more homes. So if you guys want to do this, cool, you can. we can put you on the list. But if you don't, we have to go because we can only pick three more for the whole month. That's a form of scarcity, right? Letting them know like, hey, we can only do a couple. Uh, same thing with like when it comes down to e-commerce, right? When people would land on our e-commerce website to a specific offer, they would see, hey, they only have nine items of whatever it is that we're selling available. Now that's important because if you don't use scarcity in your business, whether you're doing sales or marketing, whatever the case may be, People are going to feel like they can always take advantage of your offer and it's not going to give them a reason to really do it now. Obviously, we're in business. We're trying to get paid. We don't want people to wait till next year to take advantage of our offers because we don't even know if that same product will be available next year. So we want to have people take an action right away. So it's important to, you know, do things like use scarcity and, you know, a few different of these different tactics, right? So that's the second. The third one is authority. And authority works in many, you know, many different ways. But when we, I was doing door-to-door -door sales specifically, the way that authority would work is, you know, I would have these pamphlets I would carry around, like this big, all the time, and it would basically have a picture and an article of a state mandate that's coming from the state of California, saying that they're really trying to push to get more renewable energy. Right? They had a goal of like by 2020 they wanted to have 50 percent of all electricity being clean and renewable energy so i would walk around and first thing you know as i'm pitching them one of the first things i would do is i would show them the pamphlet like hey i'm here on behalf of the this renewable energy act and authority long story short is a way of signaling to show others why you are credible and why you're legit, right? And of course, if I'm showing someone a pamphlet of the state and it's they see that it's a state mandate, it's a lot more credibility than if I'm just trying to pitch them on it by myself and just kind of making these things up. It's a lot easier to believe something that's state related that has more credibility. It's an authority figure because of course the state is huge, right? It's not just like one single person. It's like the state of California. It's a much bigger movement than one person. So authority is really, you know, also helping out with that credibility, right? Trying to getting that establishment from a credible source. That's what authority is. And it's similar to, you know, e-commerce. So within anything else that you guys are doing, uh, another example that I actually picked up from the book was like in real estate, right? So they use an example of this real estate agent and the way that uh, this real estate agent uh, established their credibility is that rather than they telling the customers themselves about, you know, all the great things that they've done, how many, you know, how they're one of the best real estate agents, how they've closed the most contracts, how they've been involved the most in real estate and how they have all this experience. They would have somebody else like a, a, a receptionist, you know, talk to the customers first, really talk about the experience and the credibility that the real estate agent had with all their history. And that would automatically establish a sense of authority because now, you know, hearing a piece of information from someone else about someone is a lot more powerful than, you know, you saying it yourself. So for example, another example is whenever you guys see any kind of presentations come on, or if you go to any conferences, you'll notice that before anybody comes up, they establish that authority for the person. And the way that they do that is they talk about all their accomplishments, usually talking about, you know, how much revenue they generated, how many businesses they started and a whole lot more. So basically that helps establish the authority of the person, you know, before they even get on that stage to present. And, you know, having that authority is huge because it, it makes us feel a lot more engaged 
you know, with the person we're learning from because we know that they're an expert at what they're doing because now they we see them as this authority figure, right? So that's obviously super important in any business you're doing and obviously you wanna make sure you guys are doing that. Uh, the next one is commitment and consistency, right? So basically commitment and consistency is the way that you can kind of narrow that down is when somebody commits to something, usually they're more likely to be consistent with anything else that's like the decision they already made. So for example, in door-to-door -door sales, one of the requirements that we would need to find out if someone was qualified for what we were trying to do to see if they were qualified to, you know, for us to work with them is we would have to see their electricity bill, right? So one thing that we would have them do is to see if they were actually uh, interested in it, to see if they were actually like buying into what we were selling is that we would make them commit to bringing out their electricity bill outside so that we can see it. So that was one of the first things we would make them commit to. Once they already committed to the electricity bill, almost all the time, they were one of the sales that we got and we were able to close because again, you know, we get them to commit to one thing. Now it's much easier to get them to commit to an appointment or for us to actually close the sale or whatever the case may be because they're already committed to one thing. Now, whenever we had people that didn't commit, they were less likely to even go through to the next appointment or even go through to actually close the whole sale. But for example, in our e-commerce store, we usually have people commit to giving us their email as soon as they land on the website, right? And again, we talked about that we're giving them a discount code for doing so, but having them commit to the, our either email up front, now they're already committed to you know working with us and potentially doing business with us. And that may not be, seem like it like right away, but subconsciously, you know, that, that's in the works. The next one I wanted to go over is the like tendency, right? And the way that the like tendency works is pretty simple. And it's basically comes down to if people like you and they trust you, they'll buy from you. That's like a rule of thumb. It's a, one of the first things I learned in sales. And I didn't know it was like a, you know, like this weapons of influence or a social tendency or like a cognitive bias. Uh, I just simply knew that it was something that was, you know, something that we lived by. So for me, when I was doing door to door sales, you know, a majority of the time when I was pitching these people and these customers, I wasn't only trying to close the sale the whole time. My whole focus was simply trying to get them to like me by, you know, finding ways to relate, giving compliments and a whole lot more. Of course, who doesn't like genuine compliments? So one of the things I would do in door to door sales is find things to compliment right off the back, right? First thing, you know, when I made my first interaction, just finding ways that I can get them to like me. And one of the things that worked really well for me was compliments, right? So obviously when I'm doing now in e-commerce, we can't automatically compliment people, you know, right off the jump. But what we do is to get people to like our websites and a whole lot more, we create our websites so that they're very easy to go through, right? And one of the ways you can do that is on our home pages, we have the best images. For our product pages, we have the best images. And pretty much anywhere they scroll through, everything is well organized and it's very easy to use, right? It's mobile friendly, mobile optimized, and a whole lot more. So that's the way that we get people to like us online on our website because nobody comes in on a good website that looks good, has good images, all that great stuff, and just hates the website, right? Usually people get upset when you don't use good images because it's hard for them to see the product. And usually your website isn't easy to scroll through. It's a difficult, not organized website. Those are things that turn people off. The one of the last ones is social proof. And the way that it works is pretty much is when people see that other people are doing things, they're more likely to do it. And the way that I, you know, when I was doing door to door sales, one of the things I would do is when I was speaking to a customer, I would go around and find other people that were also either already had solar or already thinking about it. And when I was pitching my customers, I would tell them, hey, of course, I know you may be brand new to this, but your neighbor Tom down the road, he's actually already been looking into solar and your other neighbor Jimmy over there, he, they already have solar. So there's already people in your neighborhood already doing this. So that's one reason why we wanted to stop by to make sure you knew what was going on. Now I'm establishing this social proof in their head you know, and they know that other people are also doing, you know, the same exact thing that I'm talking about, right? And the way that we do it online for e-commerce, we have these pop-up that comes up. You guys probably already know about it. It's called Sales Pop for Shopify users. It pops up and it shows, hey, this customer just bought this product. And it consistently keeps popping up. And that is important because, again, it establishes that social proof in their head. So when a customer lands on our website and they see that other people are also buying some of the products that they're looking at, it makes it a lot easier to just trust our website. So that's obviously huge and important. So basically, all these weapons of influence, like they call it in this book, they're basically derived from um, Charlie Munger, which is Warren Buffett's business partner. For those of you guys that don't know Warren Buffett, one of the richest men in the world. Um, his business partner came up with these 
um, cognitive biases, which is basically there's 25 of them. Part of these that we just went through are part of those cognitive biases. And basically the rule is if you can get a couple of these working on someone at the same time, you can almost get anybody to make a decision on whatever it is you want to do. Whenever the time comes that you guys want to make more sales, obviously make more money, that's the goal, and a whole lot more. So make sure, you know, if you guys want to learn a lot more about these, if there's anything I missed, you can pick up this book, Influence. I'm actually thinking about doing a potential book giveaway on the next few videos, depending on how this one goes. I hope you guys got value from this video. I know it threw a lot at you. I hope it all makes sense. Of course, if you did get value from this video, drop a like on this video. Also, make sure you comment down below. Let me know if you guys want to see a lot more of these videos, key takeaways, book reviews, book recommendations, pretty much any book-related videos. And of course, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, join the VFAM, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.